Let's talk about creating morphs using the Morpher modifier. Before we get into 3D Studio Max, let's talk about the rules for creating morph targets. The two main rules are the morph targets must have the same number of vertices as the original. If they don't, they can't be morph targets. It's as plain as that. The second is those vertices must have the same relative position. All vertices are numbered and they should be similar in their locations. For example, if you have a vertex number 45 near your mouth, in the morph target, number 45 should be near the mouth instead of in behind the back of the head. Um, so they all have to be very, very similar. So what does this mean? This means you're not allowed to have any cuts, extrudes, connects, deletes. Um, it also means that you're not allowed to reapply the symmetry modifier very, very important. The symmetry modifier, when applied, renumbers all of the vertices. What else? Only transforms are allowed on your morph target. So to, to create morph targets, you're only allowed to move, rotate, and scale. And then thirdly, all of those changes must happen on a sub-object level. So we have a simple little scene here. My blue one is going to be my original. I'm going to use the red ones to demonstrate some bad morph targets first. I'm going to break the rules and change the vertex count by deleting a vertex in one and by connecting across some edges in another. And we'll see in a little bit that these make bad morph targets. Now using the green ones, we're going to create good morph targets. Again, remembering that we can adjust them in the sub-object, and I can do this in any type of sub-object. In this case, I'm going to use the edges with a little bit of soft selection and just change the shape into more of like a lifesaver shape. With this one, I can use the polygons themselves. I can scale them up. Notice all that I'm ever doing is either move, rotate, or scale. And this one I'll use vertexes. So let's go back to our original now and add the Morpher modifier. Let's take a look at the Morpher modifier itself to start out with. Notice that there are different colors that the channels can be. They can actually show up in the little slivers um, on right next to the words empty that you see there. We can also change the global parameters. We're not going to bother with that uh, in this class. So each of these little areas that says empty is a channel, and you can see the channel numbers changing to show you that we will be adjusting the different channels in there. So we'll say try to pick from scene, and you'll notice it won't even allow us to pick the bad morph targets. However, we can pick right away one of the green ones, and you see it's loaded in. And when we scrub that up to 100, you can see it morphing into that shape. Now we could continue to, say, pick from scene and choose each morph target if we wished. However, if we have a lot of morph targets, it's often easier to, say, load multiple morph targets. So we'll click on that button, and a new window will appear. And you'll notice that, again, only the morph targets that we haven't chosen yet, not the bad morph targets, are allowed to be selected. So we'll select them, and they'll bring them in as the channels, and we can test them to see how they work. Notice, by the way, that there are green colors next to the uh, different morph targets there, saying that they are active, they work, and they are in the scene. Now I've combined morph targets here, and I'm going to actually say capture from current state, 
and create a morph target from a combination of other morph targets. Notice the color, it is blue, it means it's an okay morph target, but the target itself does not exist in the scene. By scrubbing it up to 100%, you notice that it goes to where the combination of the previous three were. If you'd like, pause the video here and give this a try. Before we move into doing a full face, let's talk a little bit about progressive morphing. I'm going to take this demonstration eye here and clone it over, including the eye. And I'll create the morph target as if it was blinking. All right, so we've got that finished. Let's go over and add it as a morph target within our eye original. So we add the morpher modifier. And we can add it from the scene. There it is. And ooh, look at that. It's going right through the eye as it's morphing. That is not good. So what we want to do is create a progressive morph. So I'm going to set my morph value at 50% or halfway through the morph and I'm going to clone it including the eye again and I'm going to take my clone and I'm going to convert it into an edible poly so that the morpher that it has right now on it uh, is collapsed into it. I'm going to fix that target by adjusting the vertices as I did before. Now that I've fixed that, let's go back to the original morpher. Now what I don't want to do is add it into as a new target. That, that does not work. So I need to actually add it as part of the existing morph. So I'm going to say again, in that same channel, pick from scene. And you'll notice under the progressive morph area, another morph target. Let's scrub it. From, so from 0 to 50, it's going all the way, and then it's backing back up. So what's happened is our morph is in the opposite direction. So let's make the 50% the morph happen, then the 100%. And you see there, ah, okay, now I've got a good blink. So that's how progressive morphs works. It uses multiple morph targets within one channel, and you're able to sort of sequentially set them up.